Hey everyone, this is our lesson on cell transport, and by the end of this lesson you should be able to explain how homeostasis is maintained in a cell within an organism of various environments. So we looked at the plasma membrane yesterday, and now we're going to look at uh, how things can go in and out of that membrane, and that is referred to as cell transport. So first, one way that we're going to have a whole lesson on, on itself is osmosis, and this is the diffusion of water, so moving water from one place to another. We have passive transport, and we have active transport. So transport itself, in general, um, across a membrane can be either active or passive. And passive transport requires no energy from the cell, while active transport does need energy, and we'll talk about why. So first, let's talk about passive transport. So the movement of particles across a membrane using diffusion or osmosis. So we're moving, again, from one side to the other. And there's a specific reason why this is passive. And that's because it requires no energy for this to happen. It will happen spontaneously on its own. And some examples that we see um, that use passive transport are waters, sugars, and lipids. So let's talk about why, again, this just does happen on its own. And it's because it is driven by what's called a concentration gradient. So that means we look at how much of, let's just use water, for instance. We look at how much water is on the inside of the cell versus how much water is on the outside of the cell. And water is going to move based on those amounts. Simple diffusion is the movement of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So you always flow from high to low. Always flow high to low when you don't use energy. So simple diffusion is also important because it does not require a protein. So it will just move through the membrane on its own. We have facilitated diffusion, which is another form of passive transport, but it's using those channel or carrier proteins on the, um, on the membrane to allow for that to happen. So that means you probably are dealing with bigger particles than what can just fit through the membrane on its own. So again, it is still um, passive, so it always flows from high to low across the membrane, but specifically with the help of proteins. Again, requires no energy. If it's passive, it's no energy, but it does require one type of protein. There are two options here for the proteins that could be used. The first one is a channel protein, and it just acts like a bridge and allows molecules to cross the membrane. So that would be like this yellow one up here. It's always open, ready to go for particles to go in and out of the cell. But we also have what are called carrier proteins, and these will bind with a specific particle and push its way through the plasma membrane. So that would be this blue one here at the bottom. As you can tell, that, um, that molecule or particle could not move through um, the channel protein. It attaches to the carrier protein, and it will um, push its way through the surface. Okay, so we know passive does not need energy. We know it always flows high to low. So now let's talk about the differences with active transport. So active transport moves against that concentration gradient. So it's the opposite. It always flows low to high. See, that doesn't have as much of a ring to it. So we've got to add something to active transport, and that's energy. So again, particles will move from low concentration to high concentration, since that is not a natural reaction to... Um, concentration differences, we have to apply energy to make that happen. And we'll apply energy in the form of what's called ATP, and we're going to learn about that in an upcoming unit. You just need to know right now it's energy in the cell. So it does require a protein. This cannot happen on its own. And the protein will bind with the molecule. Let's go. Specific shape fits a specific molecule or ion. So think about what we talked about in the past that has to have a specific shape lock into it. What kind of proteins are we looking at here? And then um, chemical energy will allow the proteins to change the shape and push the molecule or ion against the concentration gradient. So it will allow it to um, change the shape of the protein to get that 
um, ion on the side of higher concentration. So there are some examples of active transport, and one of them is endocytosis. So endocytosis is where the cell makes takes in or engulfs new material. So it's material from the outside. The membrane kind of wraps itself around that material, cuts itself off, and um, moves the material inside via a vesicle. So it has formed its own vesicle with the membrane. And you can see that here in this top GIF, this yellow GIF. There are some examples of endocytosis to know the names of, and that's phagocytosis, which takes in solid molecules, and pinocytosis or pinocytosis, which takes in liquid molecules. And then we also have exocytosis. So think about this. Endo means into the cell. So we're bringing stuff into the cell. Exocytosis, think exit, we're taking stuff out of the cell. So this will expel or spit out um, molecules. So as you could tell in this bottom GIF, the cell membrane kind of expands itself to let certain a certain number of particles or material get kind of trapped. It'll cut itself off and eliminate that um, bit of material with the membrane. All right, guys, I want you to, I'm going to cut my camera off. I want you to pause the video here and I want you to fill in the chart that's in your notes with this information.